Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're hopping into the next episode of Community. This is season number three, episode number seven, titled Studies in Modern Movement. Hopefully you've been enjoying the series with me. I've been enjoying season three like over 100%, 110, 150, whatever you want to call it. This season's been like throwing out bangers and I've been loving it every single episode. You know, opinions will vary, of course, but I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm enjoying this as much as, you know, many of people have let on that this is the best season of the show. But of course, I do want to, you know, kind of build my own opinions and imprint that on the show when I watch it myself. I don't want, you know, uh, people's opinions kind of trying to sway me one direction or the other, but enjoyable nonetheless. Don't really know what this episode could be about, um, so I'm just going to kind of hop into this blind as I normally do. Um, you know, for complete raw reactions, because that's what I go for here. I don't do anything fake, nothing like that. So what you're seeing is my genuine reaction. So either you're with it or you're not. If you're not, adios. If you're with it, let's keep going. Um, before I do, I want to let you guys know if you want to avoid the YouTube highlights, that option is available to you right now over on Patreon. Links are in the description down below or pinned in the top comments. There you can find early access to future weeks ahead, you know, future episodes, full length uncut reactions so if you want to avoid the youtube highlights like i said and watch this episode with me in its entirety that option is available to you right now if you can't support me on patreon don't worry you're under no obligation to um if you can support me on youtube that's you know that'd be great too all you gotta do is drop a like comment down below what you want to see me react to next subscribe if you haven't already it's free and of course share it with your friends it helps you it helps me helps the channel grow all that good stuff let's stop talking let's hop into this episode have a good time. Talk about it immediately afterwards. And uh, here we go, guys. Let's do it. More community? What, 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 what could go wrong? Here we go. I'm so glad you're moving out of this neighborhood, Annie. So oh. You know how did Jeff dodge this bullet of friendship? No one likes helping people move. Let's, let's be honest. Thanks for helping. Can you imagine how much fun this is going to be, me living with Troy and Abed? Yeah, I forgot about that. Phase, but won't be long till you hate their guts. I'll never hate Troy and Abed. My God, I forgot. You're 20. When you become roommates with friends, the things you love about them become the things that make you want to smother them with a pillow. That's unacceptable to me. Then I'm lying? <laughs> Hit it! Like I'm gonna get sick of this. What, 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 what? We're live tweeting Andy's move on Twitter. How fun! How was I supposed to know it was a handicap space? Because the man in the wheelchair was yelling at it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he doesn't have an agenda. Where's Winger? Sick. Mm. Shaw. Yeah, I'm calling him. Pierce and Britta low key think the same. Hello? So you're sick, huh? Uh, that's what they tell me. Public. That's right, Britta. I'm pretending to be violently ill to avoid lifting a few boxes because I'm 13. Um, do you want to see my insurance card? Please. He is such... Mm. Dr. Tarpinian to radiology. Dr. Tarpinian. Crap. I, I'm sorry. I just assumed... Whatever. I don't blame you. Sorry. Yeah. I'll see you guys on Monday. <laughs> you are fantastic. So are you. How are we out of packing tape? I don't know. I think I left some in the bathroom. What the? No, nope. uh, nothing in here. Here we go, it begins. There may be a slight danger, I will end up hating them. Man, children, can't live with them, can't leave them alone with your teeth. Britta, don't make jokes. You're bad at it. Yeah, you birded the joke. What I'm saying, Annie, is that if you're going to live with two guys like that, you've got to learn to go limp. Loosey goosey. Shake it all up. Limp. Goosey-goosey. Yeah, Lucy goosey goosey or goosey Lucy? Is it hyphenated? You know what? Is it hyphenated? You don't need to know. Bro, I'm... Y'all. Jesus. There goes your deposit. No worries. That's what the security deposit is for. Oh, no. You're not letting some slumlord take your hard-earned money. I'll fix it. Really, Pierce? My landlord's coming by to do the inspection at five. Just I mean, technically, all you need to do is just find a new faceplate, unscrew that, and put the new plate on. That's it's it's pretty easy. Go to Ace, Home Depot, whatever. I'm very concerned about this living situation. What's the saying? If you can't stop them, judge them. Well, somebody's got to be this group's more compass. Jeff, it's Saturday. Call me Craig. 
Off campus, I'm just a regular Joe. Dean, uh, Craig, it's nice to see you, but I actually have to run. Looks like Annie's moving. Oh, uh, damn. Sick at the hospital. Damn, okay. he's got you. I might head there myself. I could tell them you said hi. I'd rather you didn't. Lunch? <laughs> you bastard. Smart bastard. Oh, look, a hitchhiker. A person in need. Oh, my God, it's a killer. What are you doing? I'm pulling over to help him out. Do not help him out. Why? Because it proves the existence of secular morality? I assume you both accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yeah. <laughs> Shirley loves this. Maybe. I don't know. What is he doing? What? Welcome, Annie, to your new home. Oh, so she's actually Kitchen. living with and them, course, not even in the same building. Our bedroom. The same and if the rooms are rocking, please come and knock because there's something probably terribly wrong. Yeah, we're pretty chill in there. I wouldn't want to know what's going on in there when it's a rocking. That is your room. Oh, Nabu Starfighters. Two bedroom. It is. One, two. Yours is a blanket for it. An awesome blanket. For what? It's still highly flammable, so no candles. How much do you pay per month in rent? You didn't check this out? This apartment is where dreams come true. We spent our whole lives being told that blanket forts are only for special occasions. I mean, no lie, it's it's kind of cool, but... Are you actually paying for this? It's so awesome! I'm surprised you guys haven't chosen to live in one. Well, we'll be spending enough time in yours. I mean, it's where we're gonna watch TV. Right? Oh, Annie's too nice. And what's that door over there? That's not a bedroom? No, oh, no, no, no. Is it a linen closet? Something like that. It's a room. What's a linen closet? It has our action figures or some some shit room. in there. We're eating lunch and then I'm leaving. Okay. I just hope that I don't bump into your study group on Monday. Ugh. Ugh. Blackmailed into a date. Mm. You and I are going to have some fun and create a few memories, and I suggest you get into it. Here comes the mariachi band. Oh. What? How is he an adult? A functioning human adult? There's no way. This is actually quite calming for some reason. I am him. You what now? I am the one true son of God. I was sent here to save humanity. Oh no. Hey Jesus, just curious, what's your position on marijuana? It was given to us by God. It should be legal. Oh, that's... I, I agree. Presenting the real life fairy tale of how Princess Annie was saved from bad neighborhood forests by Woodsman Troy. At least you get free puppet shows. There's a package of it in the Maybe room. Troy and Abbott are just testing her. Kind of like what Yoda did with Luke in Empire yeah, Strikes Back, annoying the fuck out of him just to see if he was ready, if he had patience. How could you know my father? You don't even know who I am. No, I don't even know what I'm doing here. We're wasting our time. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. He will learn patience. Was I any different when you taught me? Mm. <sighs> He's not ready. Yoda. <laughs> I feel like it's a test. The evil cracks and then that room that they were talking about earlier, oh. he's, she's going to get that stand room. Here? Oh. If I'm wrong, holy shit. <laughs> They're Just even matching. That's hilarious. Now that your nose is in bloom, a light hits the bloom on the grave. Jesus loves marijuana. <laughs> he probably smoked a joiner too. This is low-key pretty awesome, not even gonna lie. He's gonna try to kiss him. Please don't. <laughs> uh, that was great. <laughs> Yeah, that might have been a little fun. Uh -huh. yeah, that looked See? awesome. I would have had fun doing that. And you emailed your therapist that you wanted to be alone this weekend. <laughs> what? How do you know that? What? Hmm? And now, with your permission, I'd like to sing a little song about race mixing. This one's called Don't Shoot Do It. <laughs> Finally something that triggers Britta. See? I love that. 
Well, now the Patriot Act, as they can do it, Jeffrey, technically. Oh, yeah. I thought this was, you know, coincidence they just ran into each other, but of course, of course he orchestrated this. And the three of them live happily ever after. The end. Fix me, Woodsman Troy. Let's make the entire apartment a fort. I'll get more blankets. They're testing her, right? They're building a room for Annie? Or is this something weird? The dream is for Annie. Oh. It's, it's like the hollow deck, like on no, Star Trek. No. There's only two bedrooms, including the blanket fort. You guys are hoarding this second bedroom as some kind of playroom? And making me sleep on a pile of laundry? I'm the only adult in this apartment. I'm making an ultimatum. Me? Or this stupid dreamatorium? Dreamatorium is not negotiable. Read the lease. It's Fuck. The part we added in crayon. <laughs> added in crayon. This doesn't work for me. Annie, why didn't you the minute I joined the figure this out? I've been worried about how you... uptight I am and how I'm no fun. Moved out. Why am I always the one that has to adapt? I'm sick of this crap. Enjoy your stupid dreamatorium. We will. Damn. I didn't expect this. I'm really sorry, Annie. I had some island girls over. One of them must have slipped me a Mickey. <laughs> it, it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> how long was I out? <laughs> so so I've been out long enough for me to realize that I'm gonna need to keep living alone. Let's get you cleaned up. Oh! oh. What the hell? I have brain damage. Where's all my stuff? They moved into the room. Joy, Abed. Oh. We're sorry. Do you like it? Of course I do. It's perfect. Oh. I mean, I can rearrange the throw pillows. You have them arranged by size. And I was about to say, it's like she's about to read. But what about the dreamatorium? Redo everything. You sure I'm worth it? Yeah. There's a couple of things that we were hoping that you'd help us with. Yes. Like, where does the water go in the iron? And what's the iron for? And what gets our Kool-Aid stains? Yeah, we already know that the opposite color Kool-Aid doesn't work. What? Right. Oh, Abed, that's infected. Jeff! Infected. That's the word I was You made it. For. Hi, guys. With beer. I thought you were sick. I was. Int. I kind of made it up to get out of helping. Oh, hey, Jeff, did you know that when it snows, my eyes become large? And the light that you shine can't be seen. Oh, my. A light hits the gloom on the grave. Force by 3000, no, I love you. I am King Blogon, and my plan is to blow up the world. Jeff and Britta do not look amused. Peace and tranquility have been restored to Green Dahlia. All thanks to Horse by 3000. He belongs to the stars now. All right, five more minutes and we should probably put a stop to this, right? Jeff, are you- I liked Horse by 3000. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, guys. So that was season three, episode number seven of Community Studies and Modern Movement. Such a great episode. Guys, I, I guess I should just believe you guys when you guys said season three was just going to be knocking it out of the park or just say in general season three is the greatest season of the show because you guys might be right i mean so far it's definitely better than season one and two just because there's this string of episodes just continues to just you know get better and better at least in my opinion um i i, I love the narrative threads that we have like storyline wise with these characters and like I said earlier in one of the previous reactions, I can't remember which one, obviously, because I talk a lot and, you know, I watch a lot of things now. Um, but there was a point where I said, I like how they're taking storylines and actually having them come back in future episodes, like they're building off of those storylines. Like, it feels like there's actually a plot to follow. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, considering that this is a sitcom, a non-traditional sitcom, mind you, but there, it feels like there's now actually a narrative, a plot, something to actually follow over the long term, you know, storyline-wise. So, and that's why I'm glad that they brought up the whole Annie's moving, because I was like, oh yeah, that's the thing. It was just kind of like one of those throwaway lines, like in a previous episode where... Um, Troy and Abed just kind of like, just move in with us. And Annie kind of does that little smile and then it just kind of cuts to something else. So it was just something, it was like seeds that were planted that were just going to be, you know, sprouting up again later. And I like that. You know what I mean? Because it, 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 it's like the hooks for, for certain character arcs and beats 
that, you know, if you're actually interested and invested with the character, you can't wait to see what happens next. You know, you want to see them advancing. It's kind of like in wrestling. Um, you know, you don't just want to see two guys wrestle. That's not the point of watching professional wrestling. You want to see a good guy, you want to see a bad guy, and you want to see them progress. You want to see, you know, where they go week to week. You don't want to see just two guys wrestling because that's boring as fuck. I mean, you can watch that. That's, you know, I'm sure it's on the Olympics or whatever, but that's the whole point between, you know, sport versus entertainment. You know, sport is just, you know, it's just hard facts. Hard, you know what I mean? Um, you win, you lose, but in entertainment, in professional wrestling, there's a goal. You're growing your character. You know what I mean? You're either you're a good guy, you're a bad guy. How do you you know accomplish your win? Do you cheat? Do you play by the rules, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You know what I mean? So I kind of like try to apply professional wrestling rules and logic to this because there's some things that can kind of equate to it. Like with uh, Pierce's heel turn in season two, you know, and it was justified too, which is why I, I was really enjoying it. And here, I'm just like, huh. I, I, I thought they were going to go the route, you know, just to kind of pull off a tangent a little bit. I thought they were going to go the route where it was going to be a test when Annie was moved into Troy and Abbott's um, apartment. I thought that room that they kind of alluded to early on was going to be the room for Annie and she had to earn it. And the fact that they were being so annoying or whatever, I thought was going to be kind of like what Yoda did to Luke in Empire Strikes Back. And I don't know why I had that in my mind. I don't know. It was just because I saw Abed's Star Wars sheets with, you know, with the Naboo Starfighters, you know, I think it was Phantom Menace sheets. Star Wars fans would know. Um, cause you saw the droid Starfighters too, but it must be because, because I saw the Star Wars sheets and I'm like, I was kind of like likening the situation to, like nerd stuff that Ovid would do or what Ovid and Troy would do collectively. And I don't know why. I, I it just Star Wars and that situation from Empire Strikes Back it, it, you know, it stood out to me. You know, when Luke was like, you know, I'm looking for a great warrior and Yoda, who we didn't know at the time, was kinda like, Ooh, wars not make one great. I'm a crazy old man. I'm stealing all your stuff. And then all of a sudden when Luke realizes that it is Yoda, that's when he's like, Yoda, I am ready. Then he's like starts getting super serious and that's when Yoda's like you're not ready. You don't have patience. You know what I mean? So that's what I thought was going to happen. But you know what I mean? I do still like what happened nonetheless, even though I still think it's kind of weird that Troy and Ovid are really going to live in the blanket for it for now. And I mean, that would be funny to watch, you know, down the line if we get another episode with those guys there. But I definitely want an episode in the Dreamatorium. I feel like that's going to be like your cool Star Trek episode where it's like the holodeck. You could have anything that anything happen in that. You know, so it's like Imagination Land. Just have it all run wild. Um, I like the hitchhiker thing. Obviously, we, we didn't go down the route where I thought it was going to be the guy was going to prove to be crazy and then, you know, they're going to rob him and Andy's going to wind up having nothing at the end. So I'm glad that, you know, I was wrong for the most part because it did keep me guessing and it does, you know, and it was entertaining throughout. Um, I can't really complain about anything. I feel like this episode is just as good as the episodes before it. I personally have been loving season three throughout. Each episode I feel like is getting better than the previous one before it. And it actually has a lot of unique episodes, like these scenarios and, and, and circumstances and just these narratives and plots. Like, they're standing out to me, and I love it. And I'm loving this ride so far, so... I don't know what else to say about it other than, you know, the, the Dean and Jeff. That was that was a riot as well. And it also kind of like um, it, it gets us um, thinking about the Dean and, and what he's doing behind the scenes a little bit. You know, first we have little bits of him um, with, the, with the fire fire alarm thing. And now we find out he's like, you know, looking or, or monitoring Jeff's email. So. I, I like situations like that. I love how these characters are continuing to grow, and I love how they play off of each other. I love seeing Pierce try to fix Annie's apartment, you know. So th there's just a lot of stuff I really liked in this episode, and I feel like if I just keep going back and you know scrubbing through the episode, I, I could I could easily talk about this for another five ten minutes, but I'm not. I know you guys are probably like, "Holy shit, this guy can really talk about community," but it's true. I'm really loving the show, guys. I hope that's why you're you're continuing to support this channel, you know, and watching this, whether it be on Patreon or YouTube. Just want to just thank you guys because doing this would not even be nearly as much fun without you guys, you know, with the comments and all that good stuff. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to end it there. If you guys enjoyed my review and my reaction, you guys want to see this video with me 
in its entirety. That option is available to you right now over on Patreon. Links are in the description down below or pinned in the top comment. If you can't support me on Patreon, you can always support me here on YouTube. All you gotta do is drop a like, comment down below what you want to see me react to next, subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and of course share it with your friends. It helps you, it helps me, helps the channel grow. Everybody wins in the end. I'm gonna get out of here and I'll catch you guys next time in the next episode of Community. That being said, don't know what else to say. Alright guys, more season three. Bring it on. Come on. Alright guys, adios.